So today we're going to be looking at rural and urban settlements. We're going to be looking at things like the differences between your rural and urban settlements. We're going to be looking at things like your push and pull factors. And we're also going to be looking at your different levels of farming. Hi there guys, I'm Buddy and let's get started with this lesson. So we may have an idea as to what the differences are between a rural and urban area. However, if you were asked an exam to write it down, how would you go about doing that? Today, I'm going to be providing you with a few points that you can use in your exam if you are asked this question. So let's get started. So in a rural area, there's only one function taking place, and that will make it unifunctional. So what can the function be? It can be farming, it can be fishing, it can be forestry, and it can be mining. But if you're looking at an urban area, we can see that there are many functions taking place, and this will be known as multifunctional. You have your secondary, you have your tertiary, and in tertiary you have things like your healthcare, schooling, and that's what makes an urban area multifunctional. For our next difference, we're looking at the population density. So what is population density? Population density will refer to the number of people per unit of area. So if you're looking at a rural area, we can see that there's a low population density. And because of that, the population is spread out. But if you're looking at an urban area, we can see that there's a high population density. The population is concentrated in cities or towns. In our next difference, we're looking at the land use. So if we are looking at a rural area, we can see that the primary land use is agriculture. So farming, livestock, forestry, and other natural resource-based activities. However, if you're looking at an urban area, the land use is dominated by residential, commercial, and industrial activities. In a rural area, the economy is mostly based on primary activities such as agriculture, fishing, and mining. However, in an urban area, the economy is driven by secondary, which is your manufacturing, and tertiary services activities, including banking, education, healthcare, retail, and entertainment. Rural areas have less developed infrastructure, and access to services like healthcare and education is limited. Remember, rural areas are not going to have your state-of-the-art schools and hospitals. However, in an urban area, they have well-developed infrastructure. There are more hospitals, schools, public transport systems, and shopping centers. In a rural area, the lifestyle is often slower-paced, quieter, and closer to nature. However, in an urban area, the lifestyle is fast-paced with more social and economic activities. And those are basically the differences between rural and urban areas. So when we're dealing with your rural urban migration, there are two things that we need to understand. And that would be your push and your pull factors. But what are these things? So push factors would be reasons why people leave farms, right? These are factors that push people away from your rural area. So these factors are things like the lack of job opportunities, harsh conditions living out in your rural areas, and things like the lack of entertainment in your rural area. So let's look at the first factor, right? Your first push factor would be the lack of job opportunities. Limited employment options in rural areas often force people to migrate to cities in search of better jobs. So people are going to want to leave the rural areas in order to find better jobs. However, we know that that's not always the case because once they get to the urban area, they'll see that now there's no jobs for them. And that's a whole other topic that we will discuss in a another video. Another push factor would be the low income and poverty that is found in your rural area. So many rural households rely on subsistence farming, which may not provide enough income leading to financial struggles. So subsistence farming is farming is done primarily to meet the needs of the farmer and his family. There's not enough for him to sell and make money from, right? It's just enough for him and his family to consume. So because of this, they don't have an income and they would now want to move to an urban area to find a job to take care of themselves and their families. Another push factor would be poor access to education and healthcare. Rural areas often lack quality schools and healthcare facilities, pushing families to move to cities for better services. So as people grow older, as they get sick, they're going to need this quality healthcare. And obviously in a rural area, you're not going to find that. That is going to cause them to now move to an urban area in order to access this type of services. Another push factor would be your droughts and natural disasters. 
rural regions may be more vulnerable to droughts, floods, or other natural disasters which can destroy livelihoods, especially for those dependent on agriculture. Another thing would be floods. If these people are living near rivers, and if there's heavy rain, the river is going to flood, and that's going to destroy their homes. People in rural areas often experience harsh living conditions. So limited access to basic amenities like clean water, electricity, and sanitation can make rural life challenging. Now, a lot of people have to walk very far in order to get the water for the day, right? They're not privileged like a lot of us that we can just go to a tap and open the tap, and we have clean, fresh water. So because of these harsh living conditions, they tend to move to your urban areas. Another push factor will be social isolation. The sense of isolation due to the lack of social and recreational activities in rural areas can push younger people to migrate to cities. Now we know the younger generation is not going to want to sit and look at cows the whole day. They're going to want to go out and have fun as well. So this will push them to wanting to move to a urban area. Conflict and insecurity. Political instability, conflicts or crime in rural areas can force people to seek safety in urban regions. Now we know it's very easy to become a victim of crime in a rural area. So because of this, they're going to want to move to an area that is a lot safer, like an urban area. But sometimes that's not actually the case, right? We know urban areas can also be very dangerous. Now we're going to be looking at your pull factors. So these are reasons people are attracted to urban areas. So these are things that pull people towards an urban area. So let's look at them. The first pull factor would be better job opportunities. So cities offer a wider range of employment options, including higher paying jobs and careers in various industries. Another would be your higher quality of education. Urban areas often have better schools, colleges, and universities, attracting families who want better education for their children. Remember, in your rural area, you're not going to have, you know, quality schools. You're not going to have, obviously, access to internet to be able to further learn, like you are here on YouTube learning because of your internet connection. They're not going to have that. Another pull factor would be your improved healthcare services. Access to hospitals, clinics, and specialized medical services is much better in cities. So modern infrastructure and amenities. Urban areas provide better infrastructure such as paved roads, reliable electricity, water supply, and internet access. Social and entertainment opportunities. The vibrant social life in cities with access to shopping centers, restaurants, sports facilities, and entertainment is a major attraction. Now, in an urban area, you have a higher standard of living. The prospect of improved living standards with better housing and a more comfortable lifestyle draws many people to cities. Another major pull factor would be economic stability. Urban areas may offer more financial security and access to banking services, credit, and investment opportunities. There's also freedom and independence in an urban area. Cities can offer a sense of freedom, particularly for young people seeking independence and personal growth. And those are basically the most important push and pull factors. Now remember, they can ask you push and pull factors in many different ways. Therefore, it's best to really understand them. So no matter how they ask you any questions, you are well suited to answering them. So in terms of farming, there are four different levels of farming, right? There's subsistence farming, there's commercial farming, there's intensive farming, and there's extensive farming. So today we're going to be going through all four, we're going to be looking at the definitions and we're going to be looking at some characteristics of each. So let's get started with the first. The first will be subsistence farming. So what is the definition of subsistence farming? This is farming that focuses on producing enough food to meet the needs of the farmer's family with little to no surplus for sale. So he's basically going to grow enough crops in order to satisfy and feed his family and himself. There's not going to be enough to sell and make money from that. More scale, often using traditional methods, right? They're going to use the olden days methods of farming. You're not really going to have a lot of modern equipment to use. So family members usually provide the labor with minimal use of machinery. A variety of crops are grown, typically for household consumption. So examples are your maize, vegetables, and beans. Small numbers of livestock may be kept for milk, meat, or eggs. There is little to no profit as the main goal is self-sufficiency. Now we're going to be looking at your commercial farming. So what is the definition of commercial farming? This is farming that focuses on producing crops and livestock for sale, often on a large scale. So this is a large scale operation with significant capital investment. Commercial farming uses hired labor, advanced machinery and technology to maximize output. Commercial farming typically specializes in a single cash crop. So examples are wheat, sugarcane, coffee, 
or livestock such as cattle ranching. Commercial farming has a high profit potential driven by market demand and export opportunities. Now we're going to be looking at intensive farming. So this is farming that focuses on maximizing the yield per unit area of land through the use of high inputs like fertilizers, pesticides and irrigation. Intensive farming can either be small or large scale but uses high inputs per unit area. Intensive farming is often labor intensive especially in crop farming or can be highly mechanized in livestock farming. High yield crops, vegetables or livestock examples are dairy farming or poultry farming. Intensive farming involves modern techniques like greenhouse farming, hydroponics or using genetically modified seeds. Intensive farming has higher profit margins due to increased productivity and efficient use of resources. Now we're going to be looking at the last level which is your extensive farming. So the definition of extensive farming is farming that focuses on using large areas of land with lower inputs per unit area often relying on natural resources. So extensive farming is large scale, covering vast tracts of land with low population density, example, cattle ranching or sheep farming. There is minimal labor requirements, often using machinery for large scale operations. Extensive farming typically involves low yield crops like wheat or grazing for livestock. Examples will be your cattle or sheep. Extensive farming relies on natural rainfall for water with minimal use of fertilizers or pesticides. An extensive farming has lower profit margins due to lower yields but benefits from economies of scale. I want to thank you so much for watching especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. Please don't forget to give the video a like if you found that it was useful for you. Please subscribe if you want more videos like this. That's it from me for today guys. Take it easy. God bless you. Goodbye.